Swarm of earthquakes have hit Yellowstone National Park over the past week. The park is home to a massive supervolcano that could erupt at any time. It raw, raw. Ooh, baby, I like it raw. Ooh, baby, I like it raw. Are you serious? Are you serious? Yellowstone. I mean, this, I, it's not going away just because you and I would like for it to go away, folks. There's been 130 small earthquakes in the Yellowstone National Park since that 4.5 earthquake hit. Uh, uh, back on June 15th. But now there's been over 230 earthquakes that have hit the Yellowstone National Park area right there. 464 earthquakes in the last 20, excuse, in the last week have happened in Montana at Yellowstone National Park around this and on top of and right at the super volcano. This thing is ugly. The fountain paint pot uh, that continues to, to bubble and to feel the pressure. The ground is raising, and NASA is so concerned. They're flying constantly over top of it now with that super infrared telescope <clears throat> that can look down and monitor the movement of the magma and the lava. Uh, it came about because their funding became available to do this through a cooperative program involving the USGS, NASA, and the Park Service. Most of the money actually came from NASA, uh, and their interest in it was they were at that time just developing a lot of the remote sensing instruments, which ultimately went into satellites uh, and also into uh, interplanetary uh, probes. But uh, they, they needed test areas where the geology was well known, where they could calibrate this instrumentation. So most of this was done with some of these instruments flying in aircraft. Uh, and then uh, Yellowstone was one of several of these uh, so-called ground truth areas. And that was the, the reason we got started on it at the time we did. They know this thing is something's not right. You just don't have 464 earthquakes where a super volcano is and just let it just, just, it's not water off a duck's back here. We got a problem. I mean, we had a quake in there just a few days ago of, uh, and, and, uh, of about 3.8. We've had several over 2.5. We've had 464 in all, and it's, it is not over. The super volcano at Yellowstone National Park has been hit with more than these 400 earthquakes, and researchers say it's nothing to be alarmed about, though. What? Uh, what's going on with Yellowstone? Is there really? Because I've read this and talked to some folks that say it is there that most U.S. Geological Survey seismologists are fully government funded. And or they work at a university that's government funded. And they've been told if you say anything alarming, which we saw a few years ago about the Yellowstone could be getting ready to go, that you'll be fired or never see the light of day again. Stan, is that true? A and then B, just just give us what you think is most important first off. Well, Alex, as far as uh, what the, the muzzle is on the USGS, that has been a matter of public record, oh gosh, probably five years ago. But um, I have had a chance to talk to a couple of witnesses that were actually at Yellowstone. And uh, when when people were told the geologist to keep their mouth shut or they would be fined or imprisoned, and that was probably two years ago that I uh, got the phone calls to uh, tell me about that. That's right, and they use the argument, don't they, that, well, this is government equipment, and so this is classified, even though it's not a classified agency. Uh, yeah, look, they even told the truck drivers that were bringing the equipment in. They weren't even USGS personnel.
don't you talk. They made him sign the little non-disclosure agreement, you know, fine or and or imprisonment. Um, and look, uh, the, the data I got from one uh, geologist there that actually is one of those that was told to be quiet and pass the information out through uh, friends uh, is this. Um, they are monitoring all kinds of sites that they're not showing on the USGS um, earthquake plot for Yellowstone. And there is so much data being gathered out of Yellowstone uh, by the government at the moment that they're having to use a supercomputer just to analyze the data from, you know, second to second to try to forecast as best they can when there will be an event there. And whether it's a major eruption or whether it's a magma flow or a, a toxic gas release, all those are important to consider and to prepare for. But you know as well as I do, with the Internet like it is, with the spread of news and rumors uh, a lot of the times without people fact-checking, that should a hint of this come from official sources, it could create panic and hurt the economy even farther. You know, <laughs> I don't know how much farther you can go. The well, for those that don't know, uh, the AP and others have reported USGS says earthquake hazard greater than previously thought. So, I mean, this is being admitted, but as you said, they then muzzled them. Well, look, you know, I've said this uh, with you before, Alex. Uh, if we play the game where, say, you or I were in charge of the country and uh, we wanted to uh, protect the country and its people and the people from each other, if we were to come out and say the end of the world is coming tomorrow, we think, but we're not sure, then as an official announcement, people would panic. They would go out uh, shooting each other, rioting and that kind of stuff, looting. If we announced the possibility, not from the White House, but from unofficial leaks that occur across the country, then these leaks are picked up by people who watch the news and watch for behind the scenes colors, you know, what's happening, and they spread it through the community slowly without causing panic. Now, I think you and I would do that uh, to, to keep the infrastructure intact in case we're wrong, because, you know, even with supercomputers, you can't really accurately forecast earthquakes and volcanoes to the minute the What's day. What's the best science on the last three big eruptions? In fact, guys, you can search um, last Yellowstone super eruptions and then they go back over the thousands of years uh, and the hundreds of thousands and millions of years and it shows the uh, areas, I mean, usually it covers more than half the country uh, and changes the climate for a long period of time. What are the estimates on what the, the eruption uh, w would be like this time and how bad could it be? Well, they've been revising their thoughts on it, uh, that it might not be 600,000 years between eruptions. There might be a 1,000-year a window and that sort of thing. So they're, they're being very flexible between 1,000 and 600,000 years for the next one. But they do all agree that we're in the zone now for another eruption statistically from Yellowstone. And, and how many super volcanoes are there on the Earth? Because it couldn't just be this one going off. No, there's there's this one. There's uh, another undersea one. Um, uh, gee, I can't remember which ocean it's in, but there's there, the third one is in North Island, New Zealand at Lake Taupo. And we've been watching that too. Um, in fact, a number of people have. It's, it's going to be so big that uh, it's the Yellowstone of the Southern Hemisphere. I think the other one is in the Northern Hemisphere under the sea somewhere. And I, I think it's Iceland, that. isn't it? Yeah. We, well, we well Iceland, cert Iceland, Iceland certainly doing some wonderful things as far as magma and, and volcanoes. Iceland's actually raising up out of the uh, the seabed because the ice pack that covers uh, the, uh, the, gla the glaciers that cover the volcanoes there is melting. So Iceland is starting to rise up and you can see more magma activity uh, along that whole long fissure in the Atlantic Ridge that goes underneath Iceland. Yeah, and they're blaming so, yeah. it on global warming when the volcanologists know it's because of the magma. Well, well, yeah, and, and the other thing is, why is the northern uh, pole region, why is that warming up and melting ice like rapidly in Greenland and Iceland, and yet the south pole is gaining ice? Now, that's not a global phenomenon. It is the transfer of electricity in the Earth system from the south pole up to the north pole, transferring the heat from the south pole up to the north pole, warming the north pole there, but Cooling and I've talked pole. to astrophysicists, or, you know, we've got multiple degrees, and they say that is indeed what's happening. And NASA admits the pole's starting to move. Is that connected? Yes. Uh, in fact, NASA did release last year really high-resolution images of the 
magnetic fields inside the Earth, and they show in the northern hemisphere two north poles and two south poles down here underneath it. And that tells us that the north and south pole is really two sets that are splitting and rotating at the moment. Um, and, and this is a pole reversal, a magnetic pole reversal, and that is generating part of the, the climate changes we're seeing all over the world. Now, expanding on that, I'm looking at your breakdowns. I'm looking at the USGS. I'm looking at the Japanese numbers. I'm just a layman, not an expert like you, but, but clearly isn't volcanic activity and seismic activity exponentially increasing right now? Well, it certainly is increasing. Uh, I haven't uh, plotted the, to see whether it's exponential, but it's rapidly increasing. Uh, we get notices here, Holly and I, daily, uh, you know, by the hour from USGS. And over the last few weeks, we've just noted uh, lots and lots of earthquakes all over the planet, uh, more than we would normally see. So, yes, uh, it is rapidly uh, uh, increasing in numbers. That's, they have to put that out there, calm down everybody. But in a statement... To the Star Valley Independent, scientists from the University of Utah, which monitors this supervolcano, said the earthquake swarms are nothing new, but they're intensifying. Matter of fact, this is the highest number of earthquakes at Yellowstone in a single week. In the past five years, they've been monitoring. There were swarms back in 2002, 2004, 2008, and 2010, but this is uh very very uh powerful matter of fact we had a 4.5 earthquake hit montana at yellowstone back on june 15th and uh, since june 12th there's been 464 earthquakes there so is the swarm warning us about a looming disaster how many earthquakes have hit yellowstone this week Natasha, the U.S. Geological Survey has tallied up over 500 earthquakes in that area in the past week. Now, this swarm began on June 12th, and it is currently ongoing. Swarms are incredibly common in this area. In fact, they account for about 50% of all of the seismic activity in Yellowstone. And these are quakes that are ranging from 4.5 in magnitude to below zero. So. I'm not sure whether there's much cause for concern right now. I do want to mention that this is a supervolcano with a thick continental crust that causes large buildups of magma, and it's capable of producing a magnitude 8 eruption on the volcanic explosivity index. That means the explosion could be 2,500 times larger than the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980, which is regarded as the largest and most deadly eruption in U.S. history. Give us some context on this, what we're talking about here. Well, forget the image of Yogi Bear representing Yellowstone. We're talking about a sleeping Godzilla. <laughs> Underneath Yellowstone, that if it erupts in a maximum eruption called Category 8, it can literally tear the guts out of the United States of America. Instead of having 50 states of the Union, we would only have 30 states of the Union. Now that's Category 8. This report looked at Category 7, which is much more likely once every thousand years rather than once every million years. That means in every century, there's a 10% chance that somewhere on the planet Earth, there could be a supervolcanic Category 7 eruption. That's the danger. You, you just talked about a volcano that can, could wipe out 20 states. How, how in the world is that possible? Well, it's happened before, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3, and also 0.6 million years ago. We have the evidence of a gigantic eruption that is sufficient to tear the guts out of the U.S. of A. So this report has to be taken seriously, but hey, don't sell the store, don't panic. We don't expect it to happen in our lifetime. It, it, it's hard really to imagine this, this lake of lava that stretches hundreds of miles in all directions. It, uh, how do we know that and how, how, how do they read that? 
Well, just two years ago, there was a scare, in fact. We actually began to measure the size of this lava hotspot, and it turned out to be twice as big as we previously thought. However, uh, the good news is that it's not migrating, it's not moving. We see no indication whatsoever that a big one is coming. However, eventually the law of averages catches up to you. And this report singled out uh, Mount Vesuvius outside Naples, Italy, outside Mexico City and Yellowstone as three hotspots where a Category 7 volcanic eruption could indeed take place in this century. So there are only three of this size in all the world? Well, there are several in um, Indonesia and uh, New Zealand that have had Category 8 eruptions, in fact. But then again, we're talking about once every million years for Category 8. Category 7 will be many times the size of Mount St. Helens enough to cause widespread destruction across the state, but not enough to destroy the U.S. of A. But still, something that we have to take very seriously now. What would we get in the way of warnings, Michio? Well, unlike a media from outer space, where you get no warning whatsoever, we get warnings. If you've seen movies like Pompeii, you know that there are days, in fact weeks, of eruptions building up, grumbling inside, underneath the ground, near the, the pocket of lava. So there would be enough time, several weeks, in order to begin evacuation if and when such an unlikely event were to take place. So we know that we're dealing with here, there's been approximately 30 earthquakes that were higher than 2.5, between 2.5 and uh, and a magnitude of three. So there's something going on. The U.S. Geological Survey, of course, they're all over it. NASA's monitoring it. The, the, the University of Utah, they're on top of it. Everybody knows this is important, and so we'll continue to keep a close eye on it. I'm not going to just let this get swept on the rug and not talk about it. We must watch it. Now, if the swarm ends, if things can calm down, then good, because we've had the swarms before. But, you know, the, the, the surface of the roads two years ago was melting. Uh, last year we had herds of buffalo and bison and deer running to get out of Yellowstone. So we must watch this. We must keep a close eye because it could bring about a cataclysmic, catastrophic, uh, 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 an explosion of biblical proportions that could literally alter humanity on this planet. And so we have to watch it. We're in the last days. We see all the other signs of the end times happening. It's unbelievable.